thank uh, Wonderlust and uh, Bozeman Arts Alive, uh, Bobby and uh, Thomas Thomas, for uh, giving me the opportunity to play today. I love the harp. It's a very relaxing instrument. I play the fiddle also, but I, I play the fiddle to kind of get jazzed up, and then I play the harp to calm myself down again. It's a nice uh, balance. And um, the two I did there was a slow air uh, called uh, O'Carolyn's Welcome. O'Carolyn was a famous harp player that lived, a uh, Celtic harp player, Irish actually, lived at the time of Bach, and uh, many, many wonderful compositions that uh, Celtic harp players love to play today. He was blind, but his son, uh, towards the end of his life, towards the end of Turlock's life, his son wrote down hundreds of his father's compositions, so we have them to play today. Uh, and they're beautiful. And that air was followed by a jig. And the air tradition and the dance tradition are kind of the two main threads of Irish harp playing. Uh, and that's, I kind of ran them together there. The air tradition and the uh, dancing tradition. Uh, now I'm going to try singing a tune here. And uh, I have tried my best to learn a little bit of Irish for this tune and uh, the Irish language. Some of my friends say, the Irish have their own language? Yes, they do. And it's a beautiful language. It's full of kind of uh, twists and turns and little crags and things. And, uh, and yet it's also got some very sinuous qualities at the same time. How they do that, I don't know. But um, it's a lovely language. And uh, this is a kid's song. So, um, and it's called An Madrin Rua, which means the brown dog, but that's another, um, or the russet colored dog, that is another term that they have for the fox. They have another word for the fox too that I don't remember, Shavanach or something, but uh, the brown dog is another thing they call the fox. So this is a fox that, uh, well, you'll see. He kind of gets the better of someone in the story, and uh, it's, it's, it's a great song. Making sure I'm doing it in the right key here. I. Uh, play the pedal harp, obviously, so if I want to play in the key of D, C naturals don't work too well, so I make sure I've got all C sharps, and I do. As I was trotting over the hills, I spied a fox and he said, Little fox and he hiding in the furs and the tips of his ears are peeping. Good morrow, fox. Good morrow, sir. What is that you're eating? Tis a fine fat goose that I stole from you. Will you come and taste it? On Matrin Ru 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 Matrin Ru Tagran And Matrin Ru Na Lu La Lu Krat Oh no, indeed, you bold bad fox, how dare you boldly taunt me. I vow and I swear you'll dearly pay for that fine fat goose that you're eating. On Madrine Ru Ru Ru, on Madrine Ru Tagran, on Madrine Ru Na Luis A Lucrocus Barco Clush and I. says to you, you bold bad fox that killed my geese and ate my fine plump hens, my nice little drakes, and the nicest little ducks in Paris. On Madrin, ru 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 ru, on Madrin, ru a tagran, on Madrin, ru a na lu a la lucra, gaspar go a clush, a nair. The words to the chorus are uh, Madrin Rua, the brown dog, the brown dog. Um, and Tagrana, I love that line, it means you ugly little thing. <laughs> and then uh, the rest of it is about how he's hiding in a bush and his ears are a peeping. His tips of his two ears are peeping. Um, I love hornpipes, and um, I'm going to do a, a lever change in this one, which is a little bit of an adventure, but uh, it's part of Celtic harp playing. So the, uh, the first tune called Boys of Blue Hill 
uh, is in the key of D. And the second tune, the Wicklow Hornpipe, is also in the key of D, but it's D modal. So I need some uh, C naturals once in a while. two horn pipes. Horn pipes are great. Um, I love playing horn pipes in sessions. When you go to Irish sessions, um, there tend to be two categories of tunes again. There tend to be the slow airs, which are only occasional. And everybody stops and listens. Usually it's just a solo performer doing this, the air. It's a wonderful tradition. And then you get into the dance and it's all rowdy dowdy and everybody's playing all at once, which is fun too. But um, the, the sessions tend to lean towards the fast tunes because they're fun. Uh, the jigs and the reels. But um, I love hornpipes because they're right smack in the middle. They're medium. They have a lovely bounce. And they're not, you know, like a bullet out of a gun. They're just kind of easy going. Um, so let me see what I was planning to do next. Um, mostly what I'm doing today is a program of Irish music. But um, since I do have a wee bit of Scottish in me, I thought I'd do a little bit of the Scottish side. And um, this first one, I. Uh, fell in love with the title first because it's called The Boy's Lament for His Dragon. And I think it started out as a, a pipe march. Uh, and, uh, but I don't play it that way. Because I kind of envision the boy lamenting his dragon, right? Uh, this one also has a lever change. And well, I think I have it. There's another type of uh, Irish tune that I really love playing on the harp, and it's called uh, 
the slip jig, uh, one of the most popular ones is this one. And that one's called Butterfly. But everybody does that one. So I'm going to try two different ones that, um, again, I'm really fond of. And uh, this is in the key of G. Make sure I have my C's off. There's two of them, actually. Uh, the first one's called Mara Rua. And as in the other song, Rua means russet colored. And Mara is one of many ways to say Mary. When I was taking some informal lessons from uh, in, in Irish, uh, uh, the person that was helping me gave me, like, said, well, you say Mary like this. And then there was another person helping me say, no, you say Mary like this. I don't know how you say it, but uh, Mara Rua is the first one. And the second one is called Elizabeth Kelly's Delight, and it's a nice key change into uh, A minor from G to A, uh, I think it's A Dorian. It's a little weird playing to a virtual crowd. I keep wanting to say, how many of you have been to Ireland? And see which hands go up. But uh, we're not in the live performance mode yet. But we will be soon, I hope. Um, yeah, I love uh, slip jigs because of the way they sound. Uh, they're kind of a rolling jig. They, they're in 9, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, they have a lovely feel to them. Um, and uh, if you ever have the opportunity to watch... Uh, someone dance to a slip jig. It's a special type of dance that only the ladies, only the women and the girls do these dances in Irish culture. And it's got a lovely kind of a slip step to it in a, in a certain spot. Maybe that's why they're called slip jigs. Um, okay, so time for another vocal here, but I better make sure I'm in the right key, so. So, um, this one has a lovely melody, and one reason that I uh, do my best to sing in Gaelic is that it does have a different character. Um, the harp is playing on its own for just a bit here. <laughs> a little bit of wind came up. And uh, I feel like you learn more about the culture if you learn their language. You really learn a lot more about how, how people's brains tick if you learn their language. So I've learned a little bit of it, enough to sing this song. Luckily, there's a lot of repetition in this song, so the second verse I only have to change about four things, <laughs> which is one reason I get away with it. It's called Keola Fever, and uh, it means the music of the piper. And um, the, the storyline is that uh, a piper is wooing a young maiden who is evidently very popular and has many suitors in the village. 
The tailor wants to marry her, marry her. the hackler who does the, makes the linen cloth. He wants to marry her, and then there's another one too. Um, anyway, all these people want to marry. He says, you know what? You, you marry them, you'll just live a life of monotony. And you marry me, and you will never want for anything. Uh, you will be rich. Uh, you will, uh, everything will be perfect. And uh, that's what he's trying to tell her. So uh, I uh, mentioned this storyline to my wife, and she said, well, if anyone is thinking of marrying a musician, they should do a little fact-checking first, is, is what Alice's advice was. It is in G, yes. My force and to insist to Lord, to a base a kingdom. Our Mazurkas and uh, mazurkas again are um, a type of dance tune that's not commonly done. They're kind of uh, like a waltz with a bump in it. I don't quite understand it, but I like them.
So let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, an adventurous one for me. So a little story about this one. It's called Slan Le Mike, and it means farewell to the Mike, which is a, a river actually in uh, southwestern Ireland. And um, it was several hundred years ago, and there was a poet that, for some reason, was banished from the region for some kind of nefarious acts, or maybe somebody just didn't like him. I don't know. And he wrote this beautiful song saying how much he missed his uh, his home, the mic. I first heard this played by uh, Alec Finn, the great uh, Irish bazooki player that uh, was part of the uh, one of the founding mem members of Dedan great Irish group and it was uh, I have fond memories of it I was in the uh, crane bar in Galway and he played this tune so I decided to come up with my own version of it and uh, ordinarily the Celtic harp player does the melody with the right and the accompaniment with the left so I'm going to try switching up a little bit and try uh, an effect that I heard uh, from a wonderful band um, I think it's called Ulian and they do it with a low whistle and a kind of a ripply guitar accompaniment at the beginning and i'm going to try that on the harp we'll see how it goes I think I'm going to do um, one last vocal and that might be it. So uh, the harp is a great uh, instrument for accompanying vocals. It's been part of the Irish tradition for centuries and a lot of times there were, I was uh, telling Thomas Thomas earlier that there was a period where the Irish harp playing kind of died out because there was no patrons. The uh, Irish aristocracy was basically kicked out of Ireland and uh, so there was no one to pay the harp players so this is the moment for the Tom Robinson to say don't forget to pay the harp player if you want to but um, uh, anyway they would travel around and they were almost like a traveling newspaper because people didn't travel so much so they would go from one district to another and they'd sing about events that were going on in another part of the country they might even make fun of the chieftain in the neighboring region they would never make fun of the chieftain where they were they would just make fun of the one next door and have a little fun with that and they were uh, they were an institution they were poets they were bards and uh, so I'm gonna sing one that's not from the Irish tradition at all it's from the uh, nautical tradition and uh, but that seems a lot of Irish fans like to do sea shanties and things like that so I'm gonna do something in that vein it's called the Mary Ellen Carter and um, Written by Stan Rogers, really wonderful. So.
Well, she went down last October in a pouring driving rain. The skipper, he'd been drinking, and the mate, he felt no pain. Too close to Three Mile Rock, and she was dealt her mortal blow. Mary Allen Carter said, There was just us five aboard her when she finally was awash. We fought like hell to save her, all heedless of the cost. And the groan she made when she went down, it caused us to proclaim we'd make the Mary Allen Carter eyes again. Well, the owners wrote her off, not a nickel would they spend. She gave twenty years of service and then met her sorry end. Insurance pays the loss to us, so let her lie below. And they laughed at us and said we had to go. But we thought of her all winter, some days around the clock. She's worth a quarter million afloat and at the dock. And with every jar that hit the bar, it caused us to proclaim we make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again, rise again, rise again. That her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end would make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. All spring now we've been with her on a barge lent by a friend. Three dives a day in hard hat suit and twice I've had the bend. Thank God it's only sixty feet and the current here is slow. Or I'd never have the strength to go below. And we patched her rents, stopped her vents, dogged hatch and portal down, tied cables to her fore and aft, and girded her around. Tomorrow noon we'll hit the air and then take up the strain and make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again, rise again, rise again. That her name not be lost to the knowledge of men that loved her well and were with her till the end would make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Or we couldn't leave her there, you see, to crumble into scale. She'd saved our lives so many times, living through the gale, and the laughing drunken rats that left her to a sorry grave. They won't be laughing in another day. He has dealt a final blow. Lion bastard smiling at you everywhere you go. Turn to and put out all your strength of arm and heart and brain. And like the arm, Mary Ellen Carter, rise again, rise again, rise again. Though so your heart it be broken and your life about to end, whatever you have lost, be it to home, a love, a friend. Like the Mary Ellen 